Good evening. I want to thank all of you for uh, traveling. Uh, if you came from far away or from New Orleans, thank you for, for making the trip tonight. Um, mostly, this is going to be about the finances. So Chris Speed, the diocesan administrator, is going to present that. But uh, Shannon uh, Manning and John Kellogg and, and I and, and Karen, who's taking pictures, uh, are here. If you have questions about anything else uh, that, that might come up uh, about the budget or about anything else, so uh, let's uh, begin with prayer. The Lord be with you. And also, also with you. you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we pray for thy holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth and all truth with all peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in want, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Savior. Amen. 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 Chris, take it away. Um, thank you all for coming tonight. Um, our gracious host, uh, Father AJ, has supplied us with um, some refreshments in the back. We've got sandwiches and coffee, it looks like, and water and lemonade, so if you haven't had some already, you're you know, more than welcome to serve yourself. Um, we've been doing these present, uh, we've been doing these pre-convention meetings for, uh, I think, maybe three or four years now, and um, the point of them is to sort of add transparency um, to the budget and the budget process. It's about um, building um, collaboration and an opening discussion and answering questions and basically educating the diocese of what exactly is in um, the diocesan budget. Um, I guess we'll, um, what I'm going to go over today is um, we'll do an overview of what is the <coughs> budget formulation process in any given year. Um, we'll go over two charts that we've got um, today that are sort of like an overview of our revenue and an overview of our expenses. They give a good, almost bird's eye view of what a dollar coming in looks like to the diocese and a dollar going out. And then we'll just jump into the budget. Um, we won't go line for line, but we'll sort of pick out some highlights. And um, the whole point of this is to answer questions and back and forth collaboration. So I think usually in the past we sort of waited till the end to maybe answer questions. But, you know, I think we can do away with that. And so if you, at any point you've got a question or a point or and anything or any topic that you want to discuss that we're covering or if we're going in the order of the budget you know maybe we pass up something that you want to bring an emphasis to emphasis to um, you know reach out and raise your hand or wave or whatnot and we can tackle it then and there instead of waiting till the end when you know we might forget our question or whatnot um, so I'll um, jump ahead um, um, so the budget process starts um, you can make the argument that it starts really in March. Um, March 1st, your churches turn in their parochial reports with their numbers of how their income and expenses were. You know, we can take those numbers and plug them into our computer and um, it'll spit out what everyone's assessment is going to be. We'll take those numbers and slap them on a piece of paper and mail that out to the churches so your rectors and your vestries will receive them. And they'll look at that, um, you know, that budget or that assessment form and say either, yeah, we can pay that, or maybe, yeah, that was a little more than we were expecting, maybe we can't pay that. Um, and you'll go through, you know, they'll go through a, um, a review or appeal process to, um, to get that at a lower amount. Um, that takes care really of the revenue side of the um, diocesan budget uh, mostly. The expenses are a little different. And, um, we do that over the summer. We'll send out budget review, um, budget requests to you know person like persons like yourselves, um, you know, lay and, and clergy, um, heads of uh, committees and um, commissions and ministries and whatnot, and sort of ask them, you know, what are you anticipating for 2018? What would you like to see done next year? They reply back with. Um, their budget requests for 20, uh, 2018. Um, meanwhile, we'll take expenses that you know don't have a person in charge, like utilities and whatnot, and try to forecast what are those 
expense is going to look like next year. We throw all those together and we get a first draft of our budget. We'll take that first draft and we'll put it in front of what's um, our budget <coughs> review committee, which is, um, again, folks like yourselves, lay and clergy, um, some executive boards, some non-executive boards. So you've got sort of this mixture of you know, sort of institutional knowledge of what's been going on the last two or three years, but you've also got this outside perspective that sort of meet together. Um, they do their tinkering and they come up with a draft. Uh, that new draft is um, put before the executive board as a whole. The executive board does their sort of tinkering. Um, and they come up with this finalized draft um, that is presented um, to convention, which I'm assuming most of you are, you know, if not all of you are all delegates that will be voting at annual convention um, in the next few weeks. And so that draft will be presented to convention and y'all will vote on it and there it will be finalized. Um, to sort of give you an idea of where we are in that process right now, the executive board as of like 11, 16 uh, this morning uh, voted on um, their sort of final draft of the um, budget. And that is the draft that is in front of you today in your packets. And, um, you know, knock on wood, that's our final draft. And uh, when you show up for convention, that will um, hopefully be the um, version that you are voting for or against. Um, are there any questions so far? I'm probably going to be asked, yes, no? Um, I'll probably be asking that a lot because, um, you know, that's what this is all really about is back and forth collaboration. So if there's no questions, um, we can sort of jump to the first chart, which is the um, operating um, budget um, for income. Um, you'll know—I mean, you'll notice the narrative here is pretty straightforward. That's you know, that's a lot of blue. Um, we are, um, as a diocese, heavily dependent um, for the diocesan operating budget. We're heavily dependent upon our churches via their um, giving uh, via. Um, congregational assessments. Um, that's one of the um, that's one of the points that I believe the uh, assessment. I'm going to butcher their name too. Assessment study committee looked at was how do we compare with other dioceses out there? And one of the things that we sort of went over was um, we as a diocese depend on our churches via church giving um, a little more than um, other dioceses out there. Not everyone is uh, other dioceses are as maybe. Uh, transparent or whatnot that way but those willing to share uh, their numbers you'd be hard sort of pressed to find um, a number as high as ours ours is sort of hovered at 88 89 90 percent over the last few years um, the expenses are as an overview are also pretty similar in that you know a lot of space is taken up about half of it is orange you know that orange uh, represents mostly the, the costs that are associated with our diocesan center. You know, that's keeping the lights on, that's having a bishop, that's having a canon of the ordinary, you know, that's our audit, that's our property insurance. Um, the sort of remainder, that um, sort of remaining 50%, which we usually refer to as um, either programming or, or ministry, even those are largely taken up by um, even two sections. What jumps out is, um, you know, we reserve a great deal um, of our budget for academic chaplaincies. We have a di um, diocese that have decided to fund those, and it takes up, our, you know, a great deal of our budget. And um, following that is probably uh, the work outside our diocese, which is the assessments that um, we pay as a diocese to the larger organizations than us. Uh, that uh, we belong to, such as the National Church and our uh, Providence Board. Um, any questions um, so far? So um, we will, um, I'll jump into the budget and like I said, I'll try to go in order and um, I, I won't go over every line because I think there's like 180 of them and although, um, I mean, it's Wednesday and I don't think we've got like a football game or whatnot to get to, I'm sure. <laughs> Father AJ is going to kick us out at some point. Um, so, yeah. Do you, I see, I don't see a trend in the chart, but is the, is this uh, off East Wick or is it just going nice and up normally? Or what do you see? Um, I think it's probably been about, um, it's probably been about flat or um, slightly going up. Um, we recently had the assessment change where we combined the two numbers into one. 
And I think with that came a boost. Um, are you talking about, um, I guess, overall expenses or, or, or income or, I guess? Yeah, I was, I was, I was thinking of expenses, but I yeah. don't know the income is reflected on expenses yeah. because we're not trying to make a profit. Um, you know, I would, you know, that would be a good way to illustrate that, um, I guess, for future years. Um, I know our um, our churches have generally been either flat or going up one or two percent. I mean, it's not it's not any incline that you would be able to see, but it's either flat or up or down one or one or two percent, plus or minus. Um, so, um, if there are any other questions, um, we can sort of start jumping into this. And like I said, if there's anything, just wave and we can tackle it. Um, the first line is usually one that gets the most attention. So we are budgeting for next year uh, congregational assessments to be um, about twenty-five or twenty-six thousand dollars more than we budgeted for um, this year, which I think sounds like a lot of money. I mean, if I was walking down the street and encountered twenty-six thousand dollars, I'd be excited. Um, although, I mean, if it was in a duffel bag or something, I might be worried the mob was going to get me. But um, if somebody, you know, if I had a long list cousin that left me $26,000, I'd be super happy. Um, but, and, you know, as a percentage of the, you know, the total budget of $1,500,000, it really only represents 1% or 2%. Um, so we're essentially keeping pace with inflation. Um, that's also important that our assessments um, that we expect to receive is going up because if you'll notice on line 24, um, our total revenues that we are anticipating are actually going to be $6,000 less. Now, why is that happening? That's largely because of um, two lines in particular. For line 11, our interest and dividend income from different accounts, we are budgeting for less. The reason behind that being that our, um, our board of trustees who are, you know, our board that oversee the various investments um, held in the name of the diocese has been, um, was approached by our um, financial advisor who said, um, you know, the, the diocese has investments in mutual funds that are of the income producing kind, um, bonds and stocks that pay dividends and whatnot. And um, while I guess this particular investment had had a, um, a nice run. He approached the board and said, um, I'm a little uncomfortable with the um, amount of risk that y'all might be taking on. And I um, sort of advised if you would pull back from that sort of risk volatility that you might experience. And the, um, the board took him up on his um, recommendation and have diversified um, and lowered their risk slightly. Um, and by doing so, lowering your risk, you lower your reward you lower the yield that you're going to get on these um, investments. And so that just, the reduction on line um, 11 of about $6,000 reflects that. Um, another big change that is occurring in sort of that additional income outside of the church giving is uh, line 13, which I know um, has been a this, you know, discussion or a topic that we have discussed on plenty <coughs> other pre-convention meetings and budget hearings and, and um, the GoDay management fee um, we are doing away with for um, the budget year of 2018. Um, for those of you unaware, um, in the past few years, um, we have um, the, we the diocese have charged the GoDay endowment a management or administrative fee, if you will, um, to do that um, administering that fund. Um, we are in a position this year or for 2018 where we can do away with that. Um, which is going to mean, you know, less money for the diocese, but that's going to be more money that stays in the endowment that can go towards, um, you know, more grants and scholarships and whatnot. Um, are there any, before we sort of jump ahead to expenses, um, is there any other, you know, are there any questions on, on revenue? Um, Well, if there are no questions, um, excuse me, number yeah. 10, so, so, we're so number 10 is one, is an item that is um, budget neutral. It goes along with line one, 
not one, uh, 89. We've got an endowment that specifically pays for our seminarian support. And so if there are uh, less seminarians to support, then that's just less money that we take out of that particular endowment. Uh, any other questions? Um, well, if not, we can move on. The, the first section we get to when we look at expenses is our um, academic chaplaincies. If you look at line 49, we are expecting um, or we are budgeting to, to pay a, um, an increase of $41,000 um, on our academic chaplaincies. This is mostly fueled by um, two changes that I would say are somewhat significant. Um, line 34, we've had um, a recent change with our um, chaplain with Tulane. Um, and that is mostly fueled with, um, I think, on the benefits side. Um, it, it, I think otherwise, if you were to compare it to maybe other lines, it would seem out of whack, but it's just um, a benefits change. And then for um, line 40, uh, we are, Holy Comforter has approached um, the diocese this year about um, partially paying for um, their chaplain priest there and um, I know this is a um, this is a uh, topic that we have gone over a lot um, via you know pre-convention meetings and budget hearings and whatnot um, and so you know it's sorry sure yeah um, that um, you know I, I I know that the work that we're doing tonight is worthwhile because a lot of the changes that we are um, being added to the budget this year are, um, are topics that we have gone over um, in previous pre-convention meetings and, and, and the um, chaplains, um, the chaplain uh, compensation at Holy Comfort is certainly one of them. Um, there aren't any, if, you, if we'd like to move on. Um, Christian education, um, that's largely going to remain the same. Um, I don't think Lori Bailey's here, but I'm sure she would be happy about that. Um, for commissions on line 64, it's um, expected to go up about $4,000. That's largely attributable to um, line 63 for the commission of, um, on music and ministry. Um, their budget request this year or for 2018 um, expressed an interest in um, doing some education with our um, smaller churches um, in regards to music. And so that sounds super exciting. and bringing sort of this expert knowledge to some of our smaller churches and for our music um, department sort of interest. Um, for um, communications, uh, line 70 is about flat, so that'll, that'll remain the same or a similar amount. Um, for line 80, our, our conferences, our, the total amount we're spending on conferences is about to go up, um, or we're budgeting for an addition of $4,000. That's mostly from line um, 77. It takes um, it takes it's going to take about sixty thousand dollars or so to send all of our deputies to a general convention, and I think we send them to two province four meetings as well. Um, and luckily, we don't have to do that every year, um, but we have to do it every three years, and so it costs about twenty thousand dollars. And when we sort of balanced the budget last year and only budgeted for Seventeen thousand um, dollars in reserve. We kind of got off track, so um, by increasing it to twenty-one thousand, we should be on track for when I forget when they go. The middle of twenty eighteen, um, we should have our sixty thousand dollars to send them. Um, we're no questions so far. Um, line eighty-six. That's a big one. Um, there's obviously we have um, all souls was. Um, closed earlier this year, and so we will not need to budget for a priest um, position at there. Um, so there is um, significant money that has been freed up and is largely enabled. Um, you'll notice the surplus at the end of the budget, as well as a lot of the additions and changes that we are making um, are largely being fueled by this money that's sort of been freed up by All Souls um, closing. Um, for line 92, um, the seminarian spending, um, or the, what we reserve for seminarians is going down 12,000. We, we, I know we briefly talked about it. Um, the amount that we are giving the seminarians 
per seminarian is remaining the same. This just refers that reflects less seminarians in 2018 than we anticipate for we anticipated for 2017. Um, and like I mentioned, there is an endowment that funds that, and so if we get a surprise seminarian or whatnot, we can just take more out of it than we have budgeted for. Um, for specialized ministry, this is a new. This is also an, a new. Um, line item at line 98 for prison ministry and I think this is one topic that we've spoken about at previous pre-convention meetings um, we have added to the budget um, we reserved ten thousand dollars for prison ministry um, I think that it's probably one of our biggest ministries that we have but I don't I am unaware of us ever having them as part of our operating budget I know we've had um, we've had um, we've had um, special collections I think every once in a while but I'm I am unaware of us having them be a part of our operating budget but um, certainly they are now and that's certainly exciting um, for line 102 our congregational development is um, we're going to expand that slightly um, I know Canon Kellogg's events that he puts on via small vestry you know workshops and conferences and, and our communicators um, days are um, well attended and, and well liked and this is just expanding some of the work that he does outside the, um, among the diocese um, there's a reduction on line 108 for our national um, church assessment um, that does not reflect us paying anything less than 100% we are paying 100% of our assessment it just reflects a different rate um, I believe our assessment to the National Church this year is 16.5%. Next year, it's going to go down to 15%. Um, and it's my understanding, I, I don't think they have a rate set for 2019, um, but um, I think it will be mandatory, which we have paid 100% over the last few years now, so that should not be a problem for us. And we're getting towards the end. Um, for youth, on line 118, we're budgeting for about nine or ten thousand dollars more. I know a few years ago we had a um, full-time um, diocesan youth minister, and we sort of pulled that back a little bit to have it reflect a part-time role. And we're just expanding that as well as expanding the program, um, and that mostly tackles the sort of ministry programming portion of the, um, the budget. Do we have any questions so far? Okay, well, um, if not, we can move on. The, um, the remaining part of the budget is mostly the diocesan center. Um, a lot of the numbers are um, mostly the same um, with some incremental changes. Um, first one that jumps out to me is line 144 um, actually 144 probably through 147 um, there's some reductions there um, I guess for those that don't know we had um, sort of a staffing change um, the week of convention I think we had a resignation and you know we had sort of had the, once the dust sort of settled on that um, you know we sort of looked within and said um, you know, maybe the solution is to promote within, which is what we did. And we also, um, everyone on the bishop's staff sort of wears multiple hats. And so we just sort of looked and said, um, okay, we've got these hats that are vacant. Can we sort of distribute them out? And so that's what we did um, in November. And we did not know how it was going to go. Um, and over the last 10 or 11 months, everything's been going smoothly and efficiently. And so um, we have not had to rehire anybody to sort of fill that vacant role that was in um, the bishop's staff. And so what that means is we've sort of had um, savings um, sort of on the lay staff side, and those are reflected um, mostly on those lines, 144 through 147. Um, additionally, the you know the for the remaining budget, the last things that maybe have big jumps 156 for the audit um, we changed auditors about three or four years ago and when we did that um, I think came with it a price freeze that they were offering and we are in the third year of that um, so 
our price freeze is thawing next year. And so um, while we don't have an engagement letter um, of what it'll cost, um, this seems to be like a market of what we can expect. Plus, there's also a cushion for um, our auditors have sort of expressed that there might be some ex, you know, outside of the audit services that we might need um, as far as, I guess, reconciling or whatnot. Um, like anything with our, um, you know, if our staff can do anything um, to save money, we're always obviously looking for that. Um, I think we'd rather us do it than the $125 an hour people doing it. Um, so, but if, you know, if we can do it, we've got savings. Um, but if not, we, there's that cushion there that'll take care of it. Um, our property insurance is going up line 157. Um, I think we got the same, we got the same sort of letter that I'm sure all your vectors and vestries got about CPG lowering our um, limits and coverages and whatnot. And for the pleasure of doing that, we're, our um, premiums are only going to go up 2% uh, next year. Um, so we have budgeted for 2% uh, premiums for the first two, um, the first two payments. And then when the new policy year starts in um, the third quarter, we've just assumed 6 and 7% increases there. And that is mostly the, um, that is the budget. And we, um, that's going to represent, I guess, about a $50,000 uh, reduction in total expenses, which leaves us a um, $43,000 um, surplus. And I think in your packets, you should have a um, narrative budget, which I think probably illustrates better than me. Um, that essentially that surplus <coughs> is going to um, become a reserve that can be used in case of some type of emergency. Or in the past, we've you know we've passed it seemed like deficit budgets. I know last year we were lucky and passed a um, a balanced budget. And so um, if some there's some type of downturn or whatnot, um, and we need to start passing deficit budgets again, presumably that reserve um, would come in handy. Um, I forgot to mention the narrative budget. That is brand new um, and something that we're um, trying out. Um, you know, for the last few years now, we've gotten multiple requests of, well, why don't y'all do a, uh, a narrative budget? And so, um, you know, we sort of looked at what some other dioceses were doing um, and came up with our own. And um, so it's brand new, and we would love your feedback or input um, if you're able to look at it tonight or. If you can't, you know, take it home, and if you run into us at convention and whatnot, let us know your thoughts, because, like I said, it's brand new, and we just would love your feedback. Um, are there any questions uh, so far, finally? Okay, well, do you all have nominations or anything else to sure. other questions about the budget before we share nominations make sure to get on camera <laughs> for those of y'all I haven't met my name is John Kellogg I serve part time for the bishop as canon permission uh, part time as priest at St. Mark Harvey I'm also the chair of dispatch of business for this convention so I wanted to share with y'all who's been nominated for positions so far uh, though nominations are also welcome so the, the first two elections we'll be having are for the Secretary of the Diocese and Treasurer of the Diocese. For Secretary of the Diocese, Marsha Wade of St. James Baton Rouge has been nominated. For Treasurer of the Diocese, Les Bradfield of Christ Church Cathedral, New Orleans has been nominated. For the Standing Committee, uh, we will be electing one person from the clerical order, one person from the lay order. From the clerical order, the Reverend Fred Duvall has been nominated, Fred back there in the back. Uh, from the lay order, uh, Janice Zitzman, I hope I don't say that wrong, is she here today? She goes here to St. Augustine's, has been nominated. For the executive board, uh, we will be filling one clerical spot and two lay spots. Uh, in the clerical order, the Reverend Ashley Freeman of St. Patrick Zachary has been nominated. And in the lay order, we have five nominations for two spots. Uh, those are Lauren Anderson from St. Anna's, Jonathan Bowman from St. John Thibodeau, Owen Cope from St. Luke's Baton Rouge, 
Fred McCullough from St. Mark's Harvey, and Joel Webb from Holy Comforter New Orleans. Is anyone from that group here with us this evening? No? All right. Uh, we will be electing one uh, clergy person as a trustee for the University of the South. Uh, Father Ralph Howe from St. James Baton Rouge has been nominated. And we will be electing three clergy people to serve on our disciplinary board. And those are uh, Mother Minka Sprague, who is uh, recently retired from the Tulane chaplaincy. Uh, Father Jeff Milliken, who served as chaplain at uh, St. Martin's School. And Father Watson Lamb, who is also in the back who now serves as Tulane's chaplain. Any questions about the nominees? I can't believe I quiet you all, <laughs> which is not a bad thing. So you have no questions. Well, thank you again for coming, and uh, go in peace to love and